steps down the road. Right now, we're going to first learn how to calculate these two things and learn how to divide them. Yes, Kelvin. You can't, but you can't. You can't separate. How, do you, how would you calculate that? No, I'm saying you can only calculate variation. You can calculate the variation here, here, and here. That combines two different things. You can't separate them out. The only way you can separate by the, looking at it from the other point of view, you get the answer without that factor thrown in. So you buy, can, just, that's the logic of this whole thing. Yes. Okay, the question is, what's, what is this? Why are these three numbers different? One reason is because the people are different. Even if they're taking the exact same drug, you, you don't expect perfection. And secondly, the t that's the treatment effect. They, they, they take, they may be t maybe the H0 is false. Maybe the H1 is true. Maybe they are taking three different types of drugs, in which case you expect differences. So that the difference is a combination of those two factors, and we're trying to isolate, we're trying to isolate the treatment effect. That's the thing that, we really, that really addresses if the A0 is wrong or right. Okay, so now comes the calculation part of the chapter, which is really the most important part of it as far as the test is concerned. And that's going to be solved, that's going to be done by filling in this table. And if you go to the beginning of chapter 11, you'll see the similar table there. It's called the ANOVA table. And remember, ANOVA stands for the analysis of variance. And this table has, I don't know, four columns and five rows, I believe. We'll see if that's right. Five columns and four rows. Let's see, we need a column, we need a row that represents the, called the source of variation. Something called the, uh, sums of squares, something called the DF, something called the mean square, and something called the F. So we do need another column. The very first few pages of chapter 11, I mean, uh, sums of squares. I'm going to explain this. I'm just filling it out, then we'll go back and explain it more logically. OK, this is going to be called the variation among, I'll say among or within. Among, it's going to be called within. It's called total. Okay, so in order to understand the basic structure of this table, which basically analyzes variance, it's very valuable to go back to chapter three, which was the first time we learned about how to measure the variance. And the formula, remember, sigma squared represents the variance of a population. But when you're trying to deal with a concrete set of data, and you're measuring the variance of a sample, we call that the S squared. And the S squared, to remind you, is X minus X bar squared over n minus 1. If anybody's not familiar with that formula, I would say get familiar with it, because it's chapter 3. Now, because we're going to be calculating variance repeatedly in chapter 11, which is the analysis of variance, let's, make a, let's just point out a couple of things. The top part of the variance calculation is called, not surprisingly, the sums of the squares, because it's always going to be the sum of a bunch of squares. So we call that the SS. The bottom part of the formula, not surprisingly for those you know chapter 8, 9, and 10, is called degrees of freedom. So if you take the sums of squares and divide it by the degrees of freedom, what do you get? You get a variance. But it's also, if you think of this, this number, think about it, instead of n minus 1, think about it as n. So you divide something by, by n, what do you get? You're getting an average, a mean. So it's called the mean square. So it's called the mean square, or the average square, because you're taking a bunch of squares, and then you're dividing by n to get the average square. So the mean square is simply a fancy name for the word variance. So instead of calculating the whole thing in one shot, the table helps you organize all the steps into a bunch of little steps. First you calculate the, sum, the top part of it. You put it over here. Then you calculate the degree of freedom. You put it over here. Then you divide this divided by that gives you this number. And then you do the same thing for the other point of view. And finally, when you get the, what do you think you're going to do with these two mean squares? Anybody want to jump ahead a little bit and anticipate? Yes. We're going to divide them. That's very good. We're going to divide them. I'll let you do some self-service here. Okay, we're going to divide them. That's, so that's going to be the, so where do, you think the, where do you think the hard part is? Coming up with these sum, filling in these two numbers is the only hard part of the whole table. And even that's just memorizing a formula, using a formula, which just turns out to be not that hard. Okay, let's start out with the easy part of it. What's going to be the degrees of freedom? Well, 
the table is set up in such a way that you can decompose all the variation from this point of view and this point of view, but it adds up to a, the total variation. The total, in other words, if you just plug in these nine numbers into chapter three formula, that's gonna give you the total variation, which you don't have to really do. That's gonna be the total variation right over here. So what's gonna be the total degrees of freedom? Again, I'm, I'm asking you to sort of guess things that we didn't really learn that precisely because we didn't really approach this from a mathematical point of view. What, what do you think your guess would be for the degree? Yes. Very good, it'll be n minus one. In our case, it's nine minus one, it's gonna be eight, very good. And again, if I pass it up, pass it down there to Tim. Thank you. Okay, now, what's gonna be the degree of freedom among? This is even more uh, unfair question because we never really, just, I'm just really get, getting you to give me like a, an educated guess or just a guess. Yes. Very well, so we have three groups. It always seems to be one less than enough, so it's going to be the number of groups minus one, or three minus one, or two. In this case, we have three groups, so C is three. C is the number of columns, the number of groups. Now, the next question is a fair question, or almost fair. What will be the number that goes over here? Yes. If this plus this adds up to a total, it's got to be a six. So in fact, it is. Now, if you do algebra, n minus one minus C minus one is how much? n minus c, or nine minus three, or six. So now we know the form, so there are three little formulas to come up with that middle column of numbers, and that's what that is. Now comes the hard part. How do you get the sum, well there, there are two, we'll call the sums of squares among SSA, we'll call the sums of squares within SSW, and we'll call the sums of squares of the total SST. Now, the reason for calculating the total is just that when these two numbers are done, it should add up to this number. So this is really just a double check. So for that reason, I'm not going to really show it to you even because it's just learning another complicated formula when, you know, just do it carefully and you won't have to worry about it. Okay, so anyway, SSA, we just really got to do SSA and SSW. So let's do the formula right here. Um, Brian, is this, is this in this, in this, in, in this Okay, so I'll try to do this. Now the form, so now we need a formula for SSA. Now it's gonna look like a scary formula when you first see it, but it turns out it's not scary after a minute from now, so don't be scared. TJ squared, oh my God. I think I got a, over NJ. So the day I forget the formula, I'll have to give up teaching GT. I better check this out, hold on. Ah, <clears throat> oh, got it right. Okay, now, this formula is, look, looks kind of scary, but it's not once you realize what the terminology is. The n is what? The n is the total sample size, which is nine in this example. What is a GT? Will GT be G times T or something? It means the grand total. Basically, you add together all nine numbers, it's the grand total. And you take that and you, everything. By the way, what I should point out something which I'll repeat a couple of times, but it's a very nice thing about the second test, which is why maybe so, so many people do well on it. Every single calculation, and there are about five or six major calculations on the second test, all turn out to be positive. You can't have a negative number any place on the second test. So every calculation, <laughs> Of course, the squares and everything, you can't have a negative number. So if you have a negative number, it means you made a mistake. Okay, so the grand total squared. What do you think TJ stands for? Now, that's something, and if you had it before, you read the book, or no, it's not even the book, um, don't answer, but anybody want to take a, a guess, an educated guess? What do you think TJ stands for? Okay, well, then the TJ stands for the total of each individual column. The total, so this would be, for example, total one, this will be total two, and this will be total three. Now if you think about it philosophically, we're trying to answer the question, are these three averages the same? So at some point you gotta get the average. So by getting the total, we're sort of getting close to the average, and dividing it by the sample size. Okay, so anyway, the formula says you take each total, you square it, and then you divide it by how many numbers went into that particular total. NJ. Now, why is there a J there? Because so some examples, it could be three columns. Other examples, it could be four columns. Other examples, it could be five columns. Other examples, it could be two columns. So you can't just have, you have to put down a general letter here indicating that it can go across a whole range of possibilities. Yes? 
Say again. No, no, I didn't do it yet. So we get in, order to, in order to plug this formula here, it stands for you take each column's total.